occupied the small town of Sahran, and there was a black man, and I ran to my mother and I said to her, I saw a, a pitch black moor, because the pitch black moor is a part of a nursery rhyme. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I marveled at him and I immediately wanted to befriend him and, and I sat at the slope of the mountain with him and talked to him. And he gave me a chewing gum, which I kept for a year, <laughs> chewing on it and hiding it away from my older brother. And my mother, my mother said, uh, you, you, you kept talking to him for three hours now. In which language uh, did you speak to him? I said, in American. So, and it was, mm. since then, I, I marvel and I have the warmest feelings about, uh, about African-Americans. What a wonderful warmth this man had, and the voice was incredible, and he loved me and gave me a chewing gum. <laughs> it's a, a fantastic... And, and of course, we had, to, we had no toys, we had no tools, we had to invent our own toys. And in a way, later, I had the feeling I was inventing cinema myself, because I had not seen films until I was 11. Mm. I didn't even know they existed. And I have to add, I do that often, but I have to add it for the fun of you. I made my first phone call when I was 17. So, but I made my first film when I was 19. Mm. Um, and I, I was in a way in a situation where without much knowledge of cinema at all, I started to develop projects and I started to, to become a filmmaker and I became a filmmaker a day I was thrown out again from an office of some producers who, who laughed at me because I was still very tiny <clears throat> and I, I decided to become, uh, to make my own money and become my own producer and I worked the night shift as a welder for the last two and a half years in, in high school. And of course, then I had money and I stole a camera and I bought some raw stock and I made films. Hmm. And I'm still doing it somehow. Hmm. <laughs> you, your pictures are so utterly unique. Um, uh, it's, it's impossible to perceive what any kind of influence an outsider might go, okay, now I'm gonna look at these films of Van Herzog and I'm gonna, kind of figure out what influenced him, and it's impossible. Do you think, were you influenced by any films in particular, or...? or? Not really, no, I, I couldn't, couldn't really recall. Maybe Dr. Fu Manchu, where I discovered that they recycled one shot 10 minutes later, and I was the only one who saw that, and uh -huh. I started to look with different eyes, but probably it's more music that uh, had a, a, a deep impact on what I'm doing, or literature. And uh, Encounters at the End of the World is, is very much influenced, uh, as strange as it may sound, by, by I, I read uh, again uh, Virgil's Georgics. I hated school uh, and I had to learn Latin and ancient Greek and dismissed it and now I'm glad that I did and I, I have gone back into reading uh, uh, writers of antiquity and in the Georgics of uh, Virgil, it's so incredible how he describes agriculture and, and country life. And, and the most amazing of all is he names the glory of the country, and he names the glory of the beehive, and he names the glory of the mm. plow going through the field and, and the oxen moaning and, and, and grumbling. And, and he just names it, and, and I thought when I went down to Antarctica, no idea what, was, what I was going to find, no idea what I was going to do. And I, I took consolation in Virgil, and I said to myself, this is what I'm going to do. I name the glory of Antarctica in mm. my film, one after the other. Mm. And I name the glory of these wonderful men and women that I met down there. And, and this is why, at the end of the film, the, I, I used some music from um, Russian Orthodox church choirs, and there's a basso profundo, a bass voice mm. that is one uh, octave lower in pitch than a regular octave. And the voice, which, which is incredible, like a big column of voice, and it, it establishes the glory of one saint after the other. He just names saint after saint after saint after saint, and that's what I tried to do in my movie. 
Is, is that the piece at the end of the that's film? A very, yeah, that's a very final piece. That's an extraordinary yeah. piece of music. Very, yeah. yeah, very, very moving. And I had this piece of music before I started shooting. I knew it was going to be the end. Well, th this, that was, that's actually one of my questions, is finding music for your films. But, but I wanted to also say to you, because this, as always, the score of this film is amazing. And um, uh, the, 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 is, did you choose this, uh, this beautiful um, uh, guitar playing because th th we have a sort of a, a pioneer-like association, a uh, frontier association with, with a certain kind of, of guitar music played a certain way? I always had the feeling that the other part of the music, a part of the sacrality of the Russian church choir, should be um, a great guitar player, uh, David Lindley. Oh my and, God, he's so yeah, amazing. And, and Henry Kaiser, to uh, whom I owe a lot, because he was the one who, uh, who filmed the underwater footage. He's a great expert diver, and, and he was, was never convinced that this was any good and That's wanted so to funny. throw it away. And I said, Henry, I've never seen anything as beautiful, and I'm very grateful that he worked on the film and we created mm. the music. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm very fast in, in knowing what, what sort of music I should have. In, in 20 seconds flat, I know this piece belongs to the end, and and this should be there, do, do you sometimes spend to the dismay of, of the editor who wants to try this and that sure. and the other, and they say, no, don't you hear, this is the only and perfect piece. Do you ever let the editor try something else and to your sometimes, amazement discover that you like yes. that even better? Sure, uh, and, it, and it happens once in a while that mm -hmm. music, in music case, very rarely. Uh, I'm so sure, and, and, and I, I think I do not make major mistakes there. <laughs> as far but, as we're concerned, course, you've made no mistakes. But of uh, course, uh, uh, cinematographers, editors, uh, musicians, they always uh, have their word in it, and, and I'm never surrounded by yes-men. Did David Lindley, um, who I have uh, been a fan of his, he had a, a, a band back in the late 60s called Kaleidoscope. And um, I still have these records. I still listen to his stuff. It's really, as you as you know, you know him. Therefore, you know he plays every stringed instrument and yeah. probably others. <clears throat> Did he um, do that music to picture? Um, he saw the picture, but he didn't do it to picture. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to slavishly follow some rhythm. He understood the basic rhythm of it, mm -hmm. and um, we talked about using of instruments. For example, he would use. Um, he would do an, an almost American sounding tune, but played on a, uh, on a Mid Eastern instrument, an mm. oud. Mm, yeah. Uh, and, and I mean, it's absolutely ingenious because all of a sudden there's a strangeness in it and a very subtle beauty in it that, that you didn't expect. Yeah, bring the kind of um, Im implicit I, I love global to work with musicians. Yeah. It's nothing better than that. The uh, Henry Kaiser and, and the, the opening footage um, that you just described, I, I don't know if you've seen this with an audience, but you, and you guys will see this w when you see this film. Um, but it, 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 And it's happened with other Herzog films. I've, I, I've had this experience before, but, but this time I really noticed and I felt it um, along with the audience, where suddenly you'll, see, you'll, you'll feel everyone in the audience going <laughs> and being drawn literally drawn to the screen because it's, for many reasons, the richness of what you're seeing is just incomparable. You don't see stuff like this anywhere. And um, it's so beautiful and it, yeah. it, it, it changes your life a little bit. You know, you, you see things that, mm -hmm. that you're, you're just more experienced than you were before that shot came on. And I, I thought, um, I wrote, wrote it down here so I want to get it right. Um, uh, yeah, I, I thought that if you had business cards, you know, and, and if you wanted Which to I hand them out. Never had, but anyway, well, yeah. Well, if you ever do, what you should, you know, you'd have your name and then it should say on it, previously unseen images, previously unheard sounds uh, and thoughts. Um, this, it's, it's a reinvention of the, of the whole visual vocabulary. And this guy, Henry Kaiser, must be quite an interesting cat. If he can come yeah. to you with that footage, then turn around and create music for the film. Well, he didn't come to me with the footage. He showed it to the editor out in the control room. I was sitting with the musicians when Which we control did, room? When we did uh, Grizzly Man with Richard <laughs> Thompson. And I always sit in physical contact with a musician. And he was out there. Uh, in, in the control 